Hi, I'm Sam Rabin, and I'll be presenting work performed in collaboration with Florence Girard and Almond Arnett. The experiments and analyses presented here were undertaken by Florence as her master's thesis. Climate change is causing increasingly frequent and intense fires around the world, with historical fire suppression also contributing, especially in places such as the western U.S. This threatens forest structure and function, as well as human health and property. The past few months have illustrated this vividly, as recent extreme fire seasons have killed a sizable proportion of the giant sequoia population, exacerbated COVID cases, and contributed to flooding in British Columbia. There are a number of ways to mitigate this threat. Prescribed burning refers to the intentional use of low-intensity fire during safe weather conditions to reduce dead leaf and woody fuel buildup so that any subsequent natural or accidental fires are limited in their intensity and or size. Thinning refers to the harvest of live trees in order to remove them as potential fuel and to reduce the amount of litter being generated. In both, the idea is to limit fire intensity by reducing fuel load, thereby reducing risk while maintaining fire's important role in many ecosystems. While these strategies have a long history of practice in some places by indigenous and scientific foresters, Climate change means that optimal management choices may shift, and their use may need to expand geographically. Managers need strategies that will be effective in the medium to long term while minimizing negative side effects. Dynamic Global Vegetation Models, or DGVMs, could help in this regard, especially for long timescale simulations over large geographic areas. DGVMs commonly include fire, and sometimes also include forestry, including thinning but prescribed burning has thus far been neglected. In this study, we integrate, for the first time, prescribed burning into a DGVM, specifically LPJ gas. We compare the effects of prescribed fire, thinning, and combined management treatments for climate scenarios RCP 2.6, which experiences low levels of climate change, and RCP 8.5, which experiences high levels of climate change, on forests in Iberia, Spain and Portugal, and Eastern Europe at the end of the 21st century. These parts of Europe were chosen because Iberia regularly experiences vegetation fires, while Eastern Europe may see more burning in the future with climate change. Our analyses focus on the impacts on fire intensity, air pollution, and the carbon sink. LPJ Guess is a global vegetation demographic model that dynamically simulates competition for light, water, and nutrients among different plant types. Establishment and disturbance occur stochastically. To even out this stochasticity, many so-called patches of vegetation are simulated within each stand. A stand can be unmanaged land, or it can be cropland, pasture, or managed forest, which can be thinned at regular intervals. Fire in LPJ gas occurs stochastically in each patch. The module SimFire controls fire probability, which is calculated as an empirical, seasonal function of biome, fuel load and moisture proxies, and human population density. Note that the various functional forms shown in this image are only intended as illustrations and don't represent the actual equations used. I note proxies here because there's an important implication for this study. The fuel availability proxy, fraction of absorbed photosynthetically active radiation, or FAPAR, is actually more related to live biomass than dead fuel load. This means that combustion of dead fuel in prescribed burns doesn't affect fire probability directly. However, it does affect fire impacts, as simulated by the Blaze module, which uses fuel load and fire weather to determine fuel combustion and tree mortality. In this experiment, our prescribed burning rule is if this year's accumulated probability of dangerous fire is at least 1%, try to prescribe to burn starting next year. Here, we've defined a dangerous fire as one with tree biomass loss at least 20%. A prescribed burn will occur the next time fire intensity is such that it will remove dead fuel without killing much live vegetation, unless a normal fire occurs first. For thinning, we remove 20% of tree biomass every 10 years, beginning with small diameter trees and working upwards. All the thinned biomass is removed from the system so that thinning itself doesn't generate fuel. 
The simulation is split into a historical period from 1850 to 2014 and a future period, 2015 to 2100. We use atmospheric and socioeconomic forcings from ECMIP Phase 3b, which provided bias corrected versions of climate variables from the CMIP 6 dataset. Specifically, we use the climate model IPSL CM6 A LR. Human population density and nitrogen deposition were held constant after 2014 in order to focus on climate change effects. The historical period, after spinning up to 1850, used time evolving land use from the Land Use Harmonization Version 2 dataset. For five years beginning in 2015, all land was converted to crops. Our experimental forest stands were established in 2020. Iberian forests were planted with temperate broadleaf evergreen trees, and Eastern European forests were planted with temperate broadleaf summer green trees. We'll begin by looking at burned area. Both regions burn more under an extreme climate change scenario than a mild one. In this and the following bar graphs, Iberia is on the left and Eastern Europe is on the right. Note the different y-axis scales. RCP 2.6, the mild climate change scenario, is on the left of each region's graph. RCP 8.5, the extreme scenario, is on the right. Thinning reduces burned area, especially in Iberia. Prescribed burning, on the other hand, greatly increases burned area, even when it's combined with thinning. This is perhaps a surprising result, given that prescribed fire can reduce real-world burned area. It likely stems from a peculiarity of LPJ guess, which performs prescribed burns on all dangerously flammable patches. In reality, only some of the landscape needs to be treated in order to reduce overall fire danger. Enough burned area scattered throughout will limit the size of any wildfires that occur as they run into recently burned, that is, non-flammable, patches. This is illustrated in the figure at left, where Archibald and colleagues used a cellular automata model with varying landscape flammable fraction, the x-axis, and fire spread probability, point colors, to explore these so-called percolation thresholds. As the proportion of the landscape that's flammable decreases from right to left on the x-axis, burned area decreases non-linearly with a threshold type response. This property allows land managers in regions like the Mediterranean to reduce total burned area using prescribed fire. However, implementing this into LPJ guess would require significant redevelopment as it would require patches to no longer be fully independent of each other. More tractable future work could include the exploration of alternative prescribed fire rules to try and find an optimum. But burned area per se doesn't mean much. What we want to know is the risk posed by the burning, which requires us to look at fire impacts. All fuel management reduces fire intensity, suggesting that what wildfires do occur are easier to control. Therefore, direct risks to people, property, and vulnerable ecosystems could be reduced. Gases, aerosols, and particulates emitted by fires can cause respiratory problems and other quality of life issues in nearby populations. They can also affect weather and climate at local to hemispheric scales. Here, we use fuel combustion as a proxy for overall fire emissions. Prescribed fire enhances emissions while thinning reduces them. However, the same caveat as before applies. LPJ guess simulates a potentially unrealistic increase in burned area due to prescribed fire, so this emissions effect may also not reflect real-world possibilities. Fuel management techniques can also impact climate mitigation goals. Here, we're looking at cumulative net bioproductivity, that is, how much the amount of carbon in the land system, including products made from harvested wood, has changed since 2020. Negative values indicate that the land system is a net sink of carbon. Carbon sequestration is reduced much more by thinning than by prescribed burning, except for Iberia in RCP 8.5 where they're comparable. One caveat here is that LPJ gas simulates only 33% of harvested stem wood as going to long-term products such as furniture. The rest is emitted to the atmosphere within a year of harvest. Increasing this long-term product fraction would mitigate the reduction of land sink strength associated with thinning. Here we've described the first implementation of prescribed burning in a DGVM 
and evaluated its effectiveness in comparison to forest thinning for Iberia and Eastern Europe through the end of the century. Both treatments similarly reduce fire intensity, but have different trade-offs regarding air pollution and carbon sequestration. Future work should explore nuances of these management options to test whether more optimal strategies can be found. In addition, because LPJ gas SimFire Blaze can't account for direct treatment effects on fire probability, it would be useful for other DGVM fire models to implement prescribed burning and perform similar experiments.